Hi everyone, just want to take you through the amendments and improvements to the ceiling tool. Firstly, there were a couple bugs when you would reduce the size of the system. It would actually disappear because it wasn't calculating the cuts with the joints correctly. So that's been that's been improved. Secondly, uh, one of the the major requests was um, an amendment to the the cow pinning system and the introduction of an offset point. So we've done that. If we just go to joints, there's there's a few other features that which we'll go through as well. Go into the settings. So here we've got our, our vertical and horizontal patterns. You can select it, select it to be repetitive over one, two or three panels. Uh, Lynn asked for up to three, so I was able to, to do that. So you basically nominate how, mu how much rep repetition and that is independent in vertical and horizontal. When you expand the size of the system, it will automatically add in the extra panels. It does need a refresh. For this, you can sort of see that they are going to appear. So if we just do a little bit of a, I'll just sort of move one of them. So you can see they automatically appear and same with the horizontal system. A little bit of a refresh. Okay, so that means you no longer have to go through adding in, you know, more panels each, each time you want to expand the, the width and the height. I have also improved it, so if you go in and let's say we just turn this off and let's set it to equal spacing, you can just chuck in the number and it will automatically add it in. So you can add numerous amounts, you don't have to keep adding one at a time, which was quite painful. The next thing that I've done is I've sorted out the pitch um, function. So if we just have a look at this in 3D. So the way this works is when you adjust the pitch, the plan stays the same and it elongates through that. So it sort of, it projects from these points. So I'll just show you that. Um, but you probably won't do that in 3D anyway. You'd probably just go into the, the settings. Okay, so it basically projects from those points upwards. And you can obviously just go into your settings here and uh, rotate the x-axis there. Okay, the next request was for deleting individual holes. So if we go down to our hole settings, openings, uh, shapes and openings, Now, one thing was that was mentioned, there was an inability to select the circular hole. You gotta make sure that when you're using these movable hotspots, you do have the stretch, um, the move node function on in order to actually adjust those dynamic hotspots. The same goes for when you're adding curves. Make sure you've got that move node function. If you do come across um, hotspots that aren't working let me know straight away and um, I'll have I'll have a look into it but that should all work fine I've I've tried to break it myself and I can't okay so I've also now added the function to delete individual holes because obviously when you change your design you may want to remove a hole but you don't know whether it's hole one two three or four so you want to actually select which hole to delete so now there's a little third option down here which is off and that will remove that hole okay the other thing i did mention but didn't just demonstrate was the setting out so let's go back to the joints so we now have a, a join offset function here in the middle of the system where you can offset the joints and it works i've put in the equations for when you when you have a a certain um, pattern defined that it will continue to repeat the pattern. It won't just move the first one up. Yeah, that first one will actually start to move up. Well, it won't start to move up. When you start to move it up, it'll jump to the bottom again and then move up. And once it gets to its distance, it'll jump to the bottom again and so on. So you always get the right um, arrangement at the, at the, at the starting and, and finishing edges. 
Okay, one of the, the, the major things that has changed, uh, apparently there was a bit of a misunderstanding in, in the brief of the way the framing system should work. So I'm just going to go into 3D here to have a look at this and set this back to zero. So with the framing you now have a, a, a secondary, uh, with the joint, sorry, you now have a secondary framing element. So here I've got the T-section profile nominated. So that's my joint and now there's a frame element above that. Now you can actually go into individual in the 2D when you select joints. That's what these functions here are for. So these first two, select this. This first bot here nominates whether the frame element of that joint is on or off. So whether it's just the, the joint, as in just the T-section in this example, or whether it's got the frame on above it. So let me see, I cut a few in here. So if I, I leave the first one on and I'll turn these two off so you can sort of see how that works. Have a look at that in 3D. So you can see it's got the first element on and the next two are off. And obviously you can adjust all the sizing for those elements. So we now have the joint frame width and height. Okay, so what that basically means is you can define a logic. Um, you can define a logic as to how the framing elements work. So these are all your, your joints set up. And you can define which one of these joints, which I suppose is not the, really the correct term, but which one of those elements have an actual structural framing element applied to it above. So that should sort out the the different um, system options. Coupled with that, there is now a gap. So the panels are not actually divided by the joint anymore. They're divided by an individual gap mechanism. So, and this gap can also be turned on and off. So let me just sort of show you how that works. I go into the 3D. Now I'm just gonna go into the settings here and I'm gonna adjust the offset of the joint and I'll put it above the panel. So the panel thickness is eight mil and it's at zero. So if I put that at eight, it'll be sitting on top of it. So now you can see it's sitting on top. That's the gap in between the panels and that gap is controlled independently of this element here. Go into the settings, you can see that's there. So I can set that to a hundred if I like and it'll separate that gap out even further. Obviously I probably wouldn't do a hundred but you can adjust that to suit. If you want to eliminate the gap, don't set it to zero. I'll actually, I'll actually lock that function out so you can't set it to zero because it will cause a little error. Instead of setting it to zero, what you do is you come down here and you turn individual gaps off. And that actually eliminates that whole um, line in there because obviously these, these lines don't represent the structural elements, they represent the panel system. So let's now have a look at that in uh, 3D again. So you can see the gap from that element is gone. Now if we just have a look at the underside of that. Now these are two different um, panel colors. So you do see a line there. However, if you were to go into the settings and change the panel materials, okay. So you can see that now appears as a as a single panel so if you did want to do just a single panel system that was framed so a suspended ceiling that did not have some sort of joint um, or gap panel style arrangement then you could do that quite easily with this new function uh, one of the other simple things was the subtype so i actually hadn't set the object subtype correctly um, I haven't even paid attention to it. That's now set to a ceiling covering, so that'll um, give you the right ISC type and so on. Another um, important but very simple function is you can toggle on and off individual elements. So um, if we don't want the frame above, which given that I actually did misinterpret that part of the brief, a lot of you probably won't want that frame element above, you simply turn it off. If you want to turn off the hangers as well, that actually turns all hangers off. I'm, I don't have any turned on there at the moment, so you're not going to see anything different there. Joints, you can even turn those elements off. 
OK. And the panels, you can even turn the panels off. Perhaps you want to put your own panel system in there um, and you just want to use the structural aspects. And then for you can turn those things off. OK, I'm just going to turn everything back on. The next function that I want to show you is the improved LED settings or LED is probably not the correct term, but model view options. So we now have 3D and 2D options. So if we have a look at the 3D with the detailed, obviously you get all the all the structural um, geometry and, and detail in, in each element. If we change that to medium, our frame element disappears and it's replaced with a simple space and everything turns to flat componentry. If we then go change that to coarse, then we get even simpler um, level of detail in that line work. Okay, uh, the next function, let me just change all this back to show all the detail just in case it's influenced by it. Next function we have is the ability to adjust um, the height of bulkheads individually. Whenever you're moving these hotspots in 3D, you've got to watch because it'll start to try and snap to certain things. Okay, so you can just stretch up that. And if we grab the other one, the hotspots over here, that's that'll probably be it there. We can adjust it as well. If you want to do that, uh, a little more rapidly and you know exactly what heights you want then you can just come in here and on your bulkheads and just type in your various height okay there were two other um, things that were also mentioned that I haven't quite dealt with yet uh, the first one is is a label um, I'm not gonna build a label into this tool because I think you should use Archicad's auto labels because they are very intelligent and they're more flexible than probably something that I would end up building into this because you can obviously control layers and, and all sorts of things. So I do have a little IFC label that I'm developing. Um, I don't think it would pick up the elevation. Uh, the, all this stuff comes from the tags and categories aspect. So um, you can list any of those properties with this label. And it's just a matter of whether or not elevation is part of that. Okay, it's not an IFC tag or categories. So I'll just adjust this label or, or create something similar, um, an auto label similar that will pick up the elevation of, of an object. Uh, I'm kind of a bit baffled that Graphisoft haven't actually done that. It seems pretty straightforward, but it only take a few minutes to, to set that up. So I will uh, produce a label, an auto label that can be used with this or any other tool, and I will provide that to you. The other thing was the scheduling. Now, I haven't actually gone through to set up any, any values. I haven't had this part store specific values for area calculations or, or perimeters or anything like that. I can do that. You just need to let me know what items you actually want to schedule and how you want to schedule those items. I'm sure there are specific requests for that. Uh, obviously, you know that any parameter that is in the tool, um, any of these parameters can obviously be scheduled. So, uh, and you can do that without my assistance, obviously. Do be warned though, I, I will sort of go in and start to filter these out. Most of these parameters are not for your use, okay? They're just stored values. So they're not parameters that you can actually edit. So if we go into the panels and joints, for instance, um, although that's probably not a good example. Um, what's a good example? Here we go, J and B intersections. So, so this one, these are basically stored calculations. Don't edit these, you can't edit these, so so don't bother trying. I, I will hide all the ones that you shouldn't be shouldn't be playing around with. Basically, you don't need to mess around with this list of parameters anyway. And anything that you do want to affect can be done in 2D and 3D or in the user interface. There is also obviously a new material for, for the borders, so that's no longer controlled by the first panel material. 
it's controlled here so set that to white have a look at it in 3d and obviously there it is set as white and that also applies to the the corners elements okay lastly a, a couple of things that that haven't been included that um, were requested but have been left out um, basically because they weren't part of the original brief and they will take some time to to create is the the custom panel options so custom panel geometry beveled edges chamfered edges um, and, all, and all those sorts of features that I think is is important and I think we should do that but it'll have to be um, version 2 which will hopefully be not too far away the other thing that uh, a few of you mentioned was the ability to magic wand a room um, just it's not possible the the magic wand function is part of an, of an add-on um, it's not something that you can use in standard GDL objects if you want that sort of functionality, we would have to create um, the tool as a polyline accessory or a slab accessory. And then you could magic wand your polyline or your slab and apply it to that. Um, and that is definitely possible, but once again, that would have to be a part of version two or version three. Okay, thanks. Uh, make notes, turn on your error reports, and uh, let me know if you come across anything or if you need anything sort of adjusted. Ta.